So this is the third time I tried to record this video. Uh, loud vehicles kept interrupting me. But anyway, um, so I'm in New Jersey right now. I'm from Pennsylvania, so it's a bit of a trip. I think it took like four and a half hours to get here because I hit rush hour traffic in Philly, and that was not fun. But anyway, since I sold my lifted Jeep, I got a new car. A 1972 Plymouth Valiant. Um, you can see it's, I don't know if it's lowered or not. It might be stock, but um, aftermarket wheels and stuff. Um, racing seats, an aftermarket shifter. Um, this antenna is floppy. Um, we got racing seats, um, aftermarket shifter, a bunch of other stuff. It's overall really clean and rust free besides a couple little areas. Um, the floors were replaced uh, along with a couple other little areas. Um, I don't know how this glass got cracked in the perfect circle. That's really weird. Back here, yeah, you can see it's pretty clean. Uh, floors were replaced under there. There's a bunch of wiring. I'm not sure what that's for. I don't think it has a sub. But yeah, overall, I mean, it's kind of beat. And it's got something special. You can see a hole in the fender there. And that's where the exhaust comes out at. Um, because it has a turbo, so that's pretty neat. Uh, it's a turbocharged inline six. So I'm just gonna record the rest of the video probably tomorrow when I get, or I'll probably get home later tonight, but I'll finish up the video when I get home or tomorrow. It's about 10:30 at night, and I'm almost home finally. Uh, I just stopped at the gas station to get a little bit more gas. And so I had three miles to empty when I was on the turnpike, so I just hopped off right here to get some gas. But, um, yeah, I'm almost home, and I'll finish this video up tomorrow because it's really late. I just got home. It's around midnight right now. It's a long drive. Um, anyway, so yeah, this is the interior. I wasn't able to lock the steering wheel, um, when I was driving because it, like, the steering wheel moves this way, but it locks the other way, so, like, the wheel just gets caught at, like, a sharp angle. And it's kind of hard to explain, but basically I'm not able to keep the wheel straight like they're supposed to be. Keep them locked straight, so I just had the key in, um, turn the ignition on so the wheel can turn both ways, and it kind of just, um, made everything a lot easier. Somehow the windshield cracked in a perfect circle. That's really strange. And I, I like never saw it before. Um, it's got the factory shifter there on the column. Aftermarket shifter there like you saw. These racing seats. I don't know what uh, company this is. 3A Racing. I never heard of them before. But it's got a radio there from like, I don't know, 2003. Um, all the switches and everything work. It has the wiper squirter down here. So that works. Even though my foot's like too big to use it. Um, apparently those like speaker wires are battery cables which are uh, different. That's what you can say. They're different. Um, it's missing the dash pad. I'm pretty sure what that's what the holes are for and like what it covers. But I haven't seen the interior of these, so I don't know if they're supposed to be metal and there are like slots in here that are supposed to be filled up. But yeah, I have no idea. The choke, I'm pretty sure this is a choke. Um says so like Edelbrock on it, so 
um, that's probably what it's for, but that's not hooked up, that's right here, so you just have to give it a whole bunch of pumps. What else? This mirror has definitely seen better days. So, like the rest of the windshield, is completely faded at the bottom. But, um, metal here, it could use some, like, refurbishing, but the door panels themselves are in good shape. Windows go up and down. These are sewed up, um, the vent windows, so I gotta unseize them. The headliner is actually in really nice shape. I'm not sure if it's factory or not, but it's cool. Uh, I think that's like a thing to turn on and on, turn on the heater and turn it off. But, oh, yeah, I think that's just like a door for the air to come out. I'm just gonna leave that there. This doesn't feel like it's connected to anything. I can't see back there, but... Yeah, it's not connected to anything. But these seats are completely adjustable, so that's nice. It's got uh, aftermarket speakers in the back. The floorboards have been replaced, uh, like I think I said earlier. Um, the floor mats, I don't know why they're completely backwards. But that's interesting. It's got an aftermarket tack there. The fuse box is kind of just laying here. I don't know if you can, if you just heard there, but I slammed my head into this so hard. These are really hard and sharp. Oh, that hurt. Got a duck to get out of here. Yeah, this should be a fun project. Um, I think I pretty much showed everything so far. I don't think there's anything else that I really need to show. You can see underneath it here. It's leaking a bit of transmission fluid. Um, oh well. Just because the drive shaft's out. And it leaks oil there. As you can see, the real rear main seal is really bad. It just pours oil right out of it. Oh, there's the fuel pump there. It doesn't like to idle, so I think the uh, fuel pump's going bad on it. Or not going bad, but I think it's just too small of a fuel pump for a turbo. Uh, that's just some bent all thread for the, I guess a shifter, I can't tell what that is from right here. I don't know those transmissions too well. Yeah, so here's what it looks like in the daytime. Let's pop the hood. Oh, my hands are too big to reach in here. So it's got the turbo. I'm not sure what size it is. It looks like the engine might was probably out at one point and it's been painted. And the previous owner that I got it from doesn't know if any of the internals are, if they're stock or modified at all. So I'll have to check that out. But yeah, I'm just about to go to the car wash and clean it up a bit. So I just pulled into the car wash. I have to take up like this whole road there to uh, fit, but oh well. You can see it's really like nasty. That's all, I don't even know what, just like moss and everything. The windows are all nasty, but I'll do like all the interior stuff when I get home if it doesn't rain, which it looks like it's about to. But basically I'm just gonna clean up as much as I can. I'm probably gonna um, pressure wash the trunk the, the battery tipped over and it spilled acid. I don't want it rusting everything out. But, um, 
Yeah, I might record a little bit here. Uh, probably not too much since I don't have a tripod or anything and it's kind of a two hand job. I just got it all cleaned up. Um, I won't really know what it looks like till it's dry because everything looks shinier when it's wet. But uh, I just use the wax and all sorts of stuff to get it as clean as I can. Um, I didn't spray the engine bay down too much. Most of it just came in through the air cleaner or uh, through the hood, I mean. Um, and yeah, you know, these parts are not watertight, in case you were wondering. I think I have water in my lens. But yeah, these cars are not watertight. They're like soaking wet on the inside. So, I'll probably just leave the windows down on the way home and let it air out. Um, I cleaned out the trunk. You should have seen the nasty... There's a couple rust holes in here, so it's uh, dripping out slowly. But um, that water... I flushed it out like three times and this water is still really nasty. Uh, but it's better than before and it doesn't have any more battery acid, so that's good. And it does have a little bit of rust in random spots, like this and that are probably the two worst areas. Um, there's a little bit here. Uh, but so the brakes were kind of like non-existent when I got this thing, and I'd say that this is why. I don't know if you can see that, but it's just all rust at the bottom, and there's like no fluid in here. So I'm going to try to suck all this out, uh, clean it up, and completely bleed the brakes, and, and hopefully that will fix it. Yeah, you can see it has a problem idling. Um, it can idle for a couple minutes once it's warmed up, or maybe like a minute or two, and then it'll die, so I'm not too sure what that issue is. It runs fine if you give it a little bit of gas, so I might just adjust the idle up just a tiny bit and on the carb, and hopefully that'll just make it run better. If you never used this stuff before, you're really missing out, so... You can see the roof, it's really nasty looking. Um, the whole car is, even after getting pressure washed, it's still really bad. But just using a microfiber towel and that for about three seconds of rubbing, look at that. You can see the reflection and everything. So yeah, just a couple of rubs. Uh, with a microfiber towel and it'll clean right up. Let's do another little area. And just put a little bit on. And where should we do this one? How about right here? You can see how nasty this looks. And kind of smear it a little bit. And then Now it's all shiny. I'm gonna go over to my friend's house and when I polish the whole car, uh, he has one of the electrical ones because I polished my whole Jeep by hand. It was a pain, and I it took like three or four hours, and it was hot out and not fun. But yeah, I love this stuff. All McGuire's stuff like works really well. I still need to get like some interior stuff, um, so I'm probably gonna pick that up tomorrow when I go to the uh, auto zone to get the rear main seal and the oil pan gasket. 
In this video, like, I really jumped around a lot. I think I tried to, like, end it three times. So, I think this is the official end of the video. So, if you liked it, remember to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Oh, and also, I bought a new trailer. So, um, I might make a video on that. I don't know yet.